Adam Faith, that the age of 20, you are, for my money, the number one pop singer in this country today. At least two of your records have sold more than half a million copies. You earn about 10 times as much as a cabinet minister, I understand. Every time you show yourself in public, you risk being physically injured by your fans. Now, that's an odd life for a young man of 20. Tell me, taking it by and large, do you enjoy being a star? Mainly, I, I love it. What do you like best about it? First and foremost, I like the independence of the life. Um, I like the glamour. I like the feel of the audience. Um, I like the luxury. You say you like the independence. You think you have achieved independence, do you? Well, personal, mental independence, I have, yes. Physical independence, of course, no. No. Well, now, let's just look at your life as a star for a bit. Are you a big business? How many secretaries and managers and agents and musical advisors and all the rest of it do you have? Well, I have uh, four people working on the fan club. Yes. Um, one fan, one full-time, the other three part-time. I have a manager and an agent. I have a musical advisor. That's about it. And you, they're all on your payroll? Uh, on and off, yes. Uh, you're, you're, you're very dependent on your manager. Do you trust him? Her? It's a her. Oh, yeah, well, that's it. I trust her completely. If I didn't, well, uh, we wouldn't be able to work. Do you take advice on your life apart from your professional work? Uh, I listen to advice. Whether I take it's another matter. But at any rate, it's offered and you listen to it with respect. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you choose your own songs that you record, or does she choose them for you? No, I choose all the material. So the successes and the failures, there aren't any so far, but still, that's all your responsibility? Yeah. Yes. How hard do you work now? I mean, when did you last have a week off? Well, it wasn't so long ago, actually. Um, I went to Spain for six days. Maybe ten weeks ago. And is that the only holiday you've had this year? Apart from a few odd days, yeah. Now, this does seem a very uh, heavy work cycle, because you've only, I think you've only made seven discs, including your long playing, haven't you? Yeah, well, six successful records, an LP, and three unsuccessful records. All right, records. well, I didn't know about the unsuccessful ones, but seven I keep them very quiet. All right, but now, is that, that really is a, uh, what's, what takes up all this time? It can't be making seven records. Oh, no, making of a record doesn't take up much time. It takes maybe a few hours in the recording studio to cut a disc. But uh, traveling takes up a lot of the time. When we're on one night stands, we work, I get to the theater at 7.30, and leave at 10.30, then go to the hotel, sleep, get up the next morning, and then travel the whole day to the next venue. Well, now, you told me you like this life. Do you like that, for instance? Do you like travel? I don't like the traveling so much, no. Do you like living in hotels? No, I don't like it. Do you find that you're recognized wherever you go in hotels? Fortunately, yes. Fortunately? Well, when people stop recognizing me, I should start to worry. All right. Do you eat, for instance, your meals in a hotel dining room? Sometimes. It depends. If, um, if, there, if I travel with two or three people with me, we take a suite of rooms. It's much easier that way. Yes. Now, tell me a bit about this fan club that you have four people to run. Uh, do, is it a question of writing letters, sending out autographed photographs? What do you do in the fan club? Well, the, the, main, the main function of the fan club is to familiarize the fans with what I'm doing. And every month they send out a newsletter. And the girl, Angela, she gets the fans together. She organizes coach trips. If they ask for photographs, she gives them photographs. And all sorts of things. How many letters do you get each week? Well, I don't know. I never asked Angela that. Do you never answer the letters? N uh, a few. When I get them at the theatre, I answer some myself. Yes. But it'd be impossible to answer all of them. How many times do you have to sign your autograph in a week? Do you know? Well, I counted one week, and uh, I kept it up for three days, and it was over 700. So I gave it up then. Yes, I see. Um, you, you, you said just now, I think, that you like being recognised, but nevertheless, this must limit your life very much. Yes, well, it has limited it. Since I became uh, lucky with the records, uh, 
such as I can't, I don't go to dance halls now. Cinemas I don't go to. Can you take a girl out for an evening, for instance? Well, it depends where I take her. Um, I take her to dinner somewhere. In a quiet restaurant. That's okay. We go for a drive in the car. That's okay. But uh, apart from that, we don't go too far. Do you make friends among your fans? A few of them, but um, the trouble with that is I'm never at the one place long enough to get familiar with them. So I, it's very difficult. So friends are either old friends or showbiz friends, but they're not usually picked up from among your fans? No, I have a very limited amount of friends. Would you like to marry? Eventually, yeah. But not yet? No. Is that because your manager won't let you? Well, I don't have any of those sort of clauses in my contract. It is, however, supposed to be very bad for a, for a pop singer to be married, isn't it? So I'm told, yeah. But you, do, you don't want to, in any case, get a while? Well, I don't feel prepared for marriage just yet. Have you thought, do you, do you think of an ideal age that you'd like to marry at, or is it just that it hasn't come to you yet a while? Well, I think maybe 30 seems to be a good age to get married. I don't know, it's a, you, you can't tell about these things, can you? You wait, you, you'll find out. In you know, it course. happens all yes. of a sudden, that's yes. it. Let me ask you a bit about the finances of this big business and all the people it employs. Now, I don't know what you earn. It's said about you quite often that you earn about a thousand pounds a week, and as I, as you don't deny that, I suppose that's perhaps about true. Yes, uh, it is tr true to a certain extent. It's difficult to average out what one earns in a week because of records, you get a royalty on them. Yes. And you get that in a lump sum. For a film, you get that in a lump sum. So it's very difficult. Right. But still, if we divided a year's earnings by 52, I don't think it would come to something like a thousand a week. I should think so, yeah. Good. Well, now, do you have professional advice as to what you do with that? Well, I have, um, I've, I've, I've been in the business now for just over a year. And, and I've taken advice from my manager and her business associates. And their advice to keep it. I've been saving for the past year and intend to do so for another six or eight months. Does that mean when you say saving, I don't want to, it to be impertinent about this, but does that mean you're not investing it, you're just literally saving it in the bank, or does it mean you're putting it out into investment? Well, at the moment I'm not investing because um, come the time next summer, that'll be the time when I start to invest. Um, I see. Then well, I should buy the best brains possible. Then. To, to advise you how to do it, yes. yes. Now, what do you think you're saving for? Because you, you like luxurious things, I think. In fact, you said you did just now. What are you saving for? Security of old age. For my family. That's it. Yes. What about this luxury that you enjoy just from day to day? What form does it take? Well, the greatest, the greatest um, luxury for me is having a car. That's been fantastic for me. An expensive car? Fairly expensive, yes. About 2,700 pounds. Uh, a fast car? Yeah. It's an American car, actually. Do you like driving fast? When it's safe to do so, yeah. Do you go, do you go and look for bits of open road so that you can drive fast? No, I never have time. No. I, I'm travelling so much that um, I come upon pieces of road that enable me to speed. You like to drive yourself if you can from... Drive myself all the time. All the time, yes. Is this your first car? No, third. What was the first one you had? The first was a second-hand console. And the second one um, was a brand new car. And now this third one, an American car. Are you interested in the mechanical side of cars? Did you ever tinker about with your first one, take it to bits? Never. Always like fast driving, though? Yeah, I enjoy driving cars. What other personal, various sort of personal relaxations do you enjoy? I mean, for instance, do you enjoy music when you're not working? Oh, yeah, all the time. It, the, you, the newspaper cuttings say that you like classical music. Now, is that just a story or is it true? Well, you see, I always take interviews myself and I never give out any press releases. So most of it, of what you read in the newspapers, is true, if not just slightly exaggerated. 
but I do enjoy classical music. What particular composer? Sibelius and Borzak I enjoy very much. Mm -hmm. Tchaikovsky I like. Is this a fairly new interest, or have you liked that all your life? No, well, I've liked it for the past five years. My brother introduced me to classical music. He's ten years older than myself. And he's always had a love for classical music. And uh, I just picked it up from him. And you listen to it on records? Oh, yes. Do you ever have time to go to a classical concert? I haven't been to a classical concert for about nine months. The last one I went to see, uh, the Royal Festival Hall, Toscanini. Oh, yes. uh, have you ever had any musical lessons? Never. Can you read music? No. But you do play an instrument? Well, Well, if you bit. can call it that, a little bit. Yeah, not too much. I wouldn't call it play. What about jazz? Do you like that or not? Don't like too much jazz at all. Just very selective pieces of modern and traditional jazz I like. Any particular uh, jazz man that you favor? Traditionally, I like uh, Chris Barber very much. In fact, I've always been a fan of Chris Barber. And modern jazz, well, it's very difficult to say because I've never collected modern jazz. I've just liked certain pieces like the theme music from Peter Gunn's show mm -hmm. and Johnny Staccato, that type of thing. Do you spend a lot on clothes? Not too much, just what I need. Do you worry about what you look like or to be sort of properly dressed for the right occasion? Oh, yeah. Always. I always try to dress for the occasion. So you do? I mean, you do take a bit of care about this? Oh, yeah. Have you ever been present on some occasion where you really felt out of place because you were in the wrong clothes? Well, I have, actually. Yeah. Tell me, go on. I went to uh, the Dorchester for a luncheon, the Variety Club luncheon. And I had to go to rehearse in the morning because I was singing a song there. And I went in a casual jacket and a casual shirt. Yeah. And uh, I thought I had plenty of time to go home and put a tie on. And before I knew it, the luncheon had started. And I was the only one there without a tie. Out of, I don't know how many, hundreds of people. So, uh, that was a bit embarrassing. It was that. probably very popular, in fact. Yeah, well, I don't know. They're all a lot older than me. Do you read a lot? Fair amount, yeah, as much as I can. Uh, again, any particular taste? Well, uh, um, very varied, again, I, I like, uh, I've read some of Huxley's books. Aldous Huxley? Yeah. Yes. And uh, have you ever read any of Salinger's? Yes. I like The Catcher it. in the Rye. Yeah, oh, well, that's my favorite book. Catcher in the Rye, Salinger. And I'm going to start on Hemingway and Steinbeck now. Do you read ever because you think you ought to read something, or do you always read just because you enjoy it? Well, I started to read because I enjoyed it. Um, but then I found so much benefit in reading and got so much from it that uh, I determined myself to read as much as possible and as varied as possible. Does your brother advise you about that? Reading? Yes. No. Anybody advise you? No, I, you see, whenever I meet an interesting person, I always try to pick their brains and find out what good books they've read or what good music they've listened to lately. And I do it that way. Now, again, w most of what we know about you is from reading the papers. Um, it's said that you suffered from bad health from time to time, that you've suffered from your nerves, that you've consulted psychiatrists, that you feel particularly nervous before shows and all the rest of it. How much of this is true? Most of it is true, only exaggerated. Um, I well, what about the psychiatrist? Is that well, exaggerated? Psych once I went. Why? Because uh, he told me why I went afterwards. You see, I didn't really why did you think you went before he told you? Because I thought I was dying. I was so, uh, felt so mentally sick and tired. Um, so I went along and he said that I was overworking. But this was a long while ago. This was over two years ago. This was before you really hit the jackpot, before you were working anything like as hard as you are now. Oh yeah, a long while ago. Now, since you've had this great success, has all this problem become better or has it tended to be even more difficult? Well, I found that success has breeded confidence for me. So I don't suffer so much now. So that even though you probably work very much harder, 
you can still do it and, and, and get away with it all right. Yeah, I feel, I feel much easier now. I get nerves before I go on the stage every time. Do you really like the world of showbiz? Do you like show business people or do you still look back to a different world that you came from before you got this great success? Well, I live a very personal life um, away from show business. Um, well, when you're not on tour now, where do you live? I live at home with my parents. With your parents still. And with my friends. Yes. That I had before show business. Well, now that, uh, there's another young man in your life, of course, who isn't Adam Faith at all, Terry Nellon. Yeah. Now, tell me a bit about Terry Nellon, because I suspect he's a bit different, perhaps, from Adam Faith. H how much are you with your family nowadays? Very little now. Um, I shall see them tonight. Uh, well, in fact, I shall see them for the next ten weeks because I'm working um, in Wimbledon in pantomime, and that's very near for me. I should live at home. That means you'll sleep at home. You'll sleep at home tonight? Yeah. When did you last see your parents? Uh, a week ago. Hmm. I came home for one night on a tour to go to a spastic ball, and I saw them that night. Dressed in the right clothes for the spastic ball? Oh, yeah, of course. Do you have a lot of local friends still around your own home that that haven't changed when you since you've become famous before i went into show business i had four friends and i've still got them fortunately and they've never changed at all towards me now when you go home tonight and tomorrow morning you'll wake up and you'll go outside the house and the local people the in flat. your own street the flat yeah. the local people in your own street will see you will you be mobbed by fans then or do they accept you in your own home they accept me very much in, uh, i live I'm in a state of council flats and having lived there for so long, I, found, I haven't found any difference amongst them at all. You're still Terry Nellon for that? Completely, yeah. yeah. Do you find any difference, any friction between your present life and your family when you go home? I mean, for instance, do you keep different hours from what they do? Just, for example, do your parents go to bed early and you stay up half the night playing music, for instance, and that kind of thing? Well, it's a little difficult in a small flat to play music because it keeps them awake. Well, that's just exactly what I'm asking you. Yeah, but I... I seldom sit up at home because I, when I'm at home, in acting, I spend time with my friends and I go to their place to play music so it doesn't interfere with my family. But I never, I never went to bed before three or four o'clock, when I before I came into the show business, mm. so it hasn't made that much difference to them. Do you ever ask your parents for advice now? No, my parents on show business, you mean? Well, on anything, on any of the problems of your life. Well, I've always, with my parents, they've never enforced their ideas on me, for, uh, even at a young age, and now. I suppose that as I grew older, I didn't, uh, I didn't find I had to take, rely on them to live. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. Uh, because they always, I started work when I was very young. I worked for my mother and I worked newspaper rounds when I was 12. And uh, I bought all my own clothes. So I became independent very early on. And my mother and father encouraged it as they are my brothers and sisters. Yes. Do they take an interest in your career? Oh, all the time. They follow you and they know exactly where you are and what you're doing. Well, they'll be sitting home tonight watching this with a dry mouth. Is your father a trade unionist? No, he works for a, a coach company. And uh, I don't believe they have a union there. Uh, have you ever been a member of a union yourself? Well, I am a member of a union. I'm a member of the... Uh, ACTT, that's the Cine Technicians, and you've kept your card alive. Yeah. Do you yeah, ever yeah. think you'll ever go back to it? Well, you never know when you need it, <laughs> this, do you? You see, I don't know. Tell me, when did you first discover, uh, presumably as quite a kid, that you'd got this talent? Or were you grown up? Uh, I was 16. How did you discover it? Well, I started, I was a messenger boy for a com film company for a while. Then I left, and there were six, actually there were six messenger boys. And I left the company and went to another, a television company to be an assistant editor. A film editor? Yeah, a film yeah. editor. Yeah. And 
The rest of the boys started the skipple group, and they didn't have a singer. And so they asked me if I would come in the skipple group and sing. And that was the first time. So I went down there, and we rehearsed and practiced, and gradually it came about. And your first professional engagement, was that 6-5 special? Well, the very, very first professional engagement was a, at a boys' club in Wandsworth. I think we got 15 shillings. And uh, that was with the skiffle group. And 6 5 special was the first time you got two guineas, anyway. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Were you a success straight off, or I think you weren't. You, you had two goes at this, didn't you? Yeah, I, I spent a couple of months in show business when I went on 6 5 special. I made two records, and I did some stage shows, and they were all deadly failures. So I got disheartened and went back to work. And then, about a year later, a good friend of mine, John Barry, rang me up at the film studios and said he was on a new BBC program called John Beat, and they were looking for new faces on the show, and would I go along for an audition? So he fixed an audition for me with this producer, Stuart Morris, and I went along and Stuart gave me the show. And that was your break? That was when it first started. Do you remember when you got that second offer? I mean, were you very excited about it? Do you think this time I'm going to be a star? Or did you ask, what, what's the money going to be? Or what, what was in your mind? Mostly, uh, mostly, I wanted a car, you see. And when I was in the film studios, I decided to devote myself to making a career. And, uh, I became passionately interested in it. And I worked all hours, Saturday and Sunday. And before I knew it, I had a small savings account. I think it was about 30 or 40 pounds. And that decided me to save the rest to put a deposit on a car. So when I got this chance to go on drumbeat, I kept my job for three weeks. And uh, because it was, the contracts were optional, of three weeks, three weeks, nine weeks, and another 13, whatever it was. So I decided to go on. If it wasn't a success, I'd made money off the three shows, I could buy a car, put a deposit down. But after three, I got signed up for some more, so I gave up the job. Yes. In other words, this great opportunity was, was it, the first impact was bankroll. It was a bit of a motor car and yeah. so on. Is it still that? I mean, have you got a mission now, or are you still in this for, for, for the dough? Well, now, at first I was in it very much for the money. But that soon left me because there's so much excitement and thrill connected with show business that after a while the money doesn't seem so important. Well, especially when you've got an awful lot of it. Well, the more you have, the less important it becomes. Yes. Uh, if you're silly, of course. But I save as much as I can now, just in case. Yes. Do you worry about the future a lot? I don't worry too much about the future. I'm, I have a little bit of money now. Are you satisfied with the success you've had, or have you got a lot of ambitions that the world doesn't know about? Well, I, I want to become a better performer on stage. I want to try and make better records. Really, I just want to become a better performer. Yes, but how long do you reckon you can go on being a pop singer? Well, Bing's gone on a long time, of course, but do you really think you're going to spend your life singing or are you going to develop into an actor or do something quite different? Well, I hope to, I hope to sing for the rest of my life, but I want to spend much more time trying to develop as an actor. Any notions of having any uh, particular musical training or do you reckon you'll just allow yourself to develop as it comes? Well, I think for a few years I'll just allow it to come because uh, I don't know what makes people buy my records. I mean, maybe just the naturalness of the voice coming over. And uh, if I take musical instruction, it might destroy that. And I'd hate that to, to happen at this stage. Do you get actual satisfaction yourself out of singing a song well? Oh, yeah. Well, as well as I can. Yes. Now, the image of you which is put across, I don't know whether it's your image or whether it's publicity people, but you're quite different from most of the other pop singers. I, I, I mean, I, I've been consulting some teenage friends of mine and they tell me that you're cool, that you're moody, that you're mo mean, uh, you're offbeat, and you're sexually attractive. 
Now, this is a long list of adjectives. It certainly but is. Is this the sort of image that you and your advisors want to create? It is different from the other pop singers, I think. Yeah. It's very difficult to say here because I don't have a press agent at all. And I always take interviews myself. And when I first started in show business, uh, I met Evelyn Taylor, my manager. And when I first saw her, I dressed as, as I wanted to dress then, casually with jeans and a leather jacket. Um, so I think that's the impression she got of me. And the press took it up because that's how I, that's when I'm at rehearsal, that's how I dress. And the press, I've always found that when I'm being interviewed, that they take the most outstanding characteristic, whether it's good or bad, or whether it's true or false, they and just take that. And blow it up. And that is the character that they build up. And another pressman read the cuttings that the first pressmen have built up, and then they go along to the interview and they've already got it sized up. You're very So you're fighting uh, two battles here. What would you say is the most valuable lesson you've learned in your personal life in this, really, the year you've had of terrific success? How's that? How's, how's that? What's the most valuable lesson you've learned in this year that you've had? Well, as a person as or a as person. an entertainer? No, as a person. Well, I've become more tolerant to advice of this past year because I came into show business knowing completely nothing. And I only know just a little bit more now. And you need people to tell you where you're going wrong. You must have them to tell you. And I think that's, I've relied on people to help me. And uh, it's overflowed into my personal life. Now, you see, yes, and, and uh, looking at you from outside, probably millions of teenagers would, would copy you, what, whatever you did. If you shaved all your hair off like Yul Brynner, a million young men well, would no do this tomorrow that. morning. Now, do you think that makes sense, that, that a young man of 20 should be the idol of so many millions? Sense, I don't know. You see, I don't feel that they would shave their heads if I had a Yul Brynner haircut. I don't think that uh, if I put my head in the gas oven, they wouldn't do it. See, I don't think that, that they would. You think they're more independent than we give them credit yeah, for? I think so, you see, because I meet teenagers all the time. When I'm working, I always meet them in the dressing room. And I've found them completely independent. You see, this is another thing that the press have taken. Because uh, in a world with many, many millions of people and millions of teenagers, a few teenagers do things that get into the press, and immediately every single teenager in the country is put into the category. Well, now let me then ask you as a last question. What's quite certain is that whether they'd copy you or not, you're very much admired by millions of teenagers. Now, if you could say it for yourself, what are the qualities that you would most like to be admired for? Sincerity. Uh, in being an individual, I think all teenagers should strive to be individuals. And let me see. I don't know. There are so many different things I'd like people to like me for. But I think being an individual, being sincere, and being frank with other people are the most important things. The thorny issue of civil rights takes centre stage next on BBC Knowledge. Face to Face continues with Dr Martin Luther King.